Simo Heha is credited with being the most deadly sniper in the history of war. The most fascinating aspect of his story is the fact that his amazing feats took place not in a long, protracted war, but rather in a short but deadly conflict, the Winter War, which lasted just under 100 days. Some two years prior to the Soviet Union squaring off with Germany in World War II, it fought a short but bloody conflict with its tiny neighbor, Finland. Joseph Stalin was looking to expand the Soviet Union's influence in Europe. Citing the need for the protection of Leningrad from Germany, Stalin demanded that Finland's border with Russia be moved back 16 miles to create a buffer around Leningrad. In addition, the Soviets wanted Finland to lease them territory on the Hanko Peninsula for the purpose of constructing a naval base. Stalin offered Russian land in exchange for the Finnish territory. On November 30, 1939, after ultimatums and failed negotiations, the Red Army launched an invasion of Finland with half a million troops. Even though they were vastly outnumbered and outgunned, the Finns offered up a spirited defense of their country. It was in this setting that Simo Heha began his incredible service as a sniper for the Finnish army. Heha was born in 1905 and served his 15-month compulsory military service in 1925 and 1926. He was called back up to serve in the Winter War and earned the nickname White Death due to his prolific success as a sniper. He used two type weapons during the war, a Seiko M2830, which is a variant of the Soviet Mosin Negrant rifle, and used that weapon when he was operating as a sniper. He also used a Suomi KP-31 machine gun, which he utilized during more conventional type action. Although Simo had access to telescopic sights, he preferred to use open sights, and he proved that in the right hands, open sights can be just as lethal as weapons with telescopes. He preferred the iron sights because telescopes tend to cloud up in cold weather and are less likely to reflect sunlight off the lens and give away a sniper's position. An advantage that Heha had against his Soviet adversaries was the use of white camouflaging in the winter snows in Finland. The Soviets were only issued standard army green uniforms, which made it much easier for Finnish snipers to identify their targets, and it also presented a much clearer target. Add to that the fact the boys from Finland were almost universally excellent skiers, and you have many advantages accrued to the homeland defenders. White Death, as he came to be known, wreaked incredible havoc on his enemies from the Soviet Union and became a feared adversary. Heha is credited with 505 kills. Think about that. 505 enemy kills in a war that lasted only 99 days, an average of over five per day. On March 5, 1940, Simo Heha's war duty came to an end as he was seriously injured when an enemy explosive bullet hit him in the lower jaw. He was found unconscious, believed dead, and his body was placed in a pile of dead bodies. When a comrade noticed a leg twitching in the pile of bodies, he was pulled out and evacuated to safety. The bullet had removed his upper jaw, most of his lower jaw, and left cheek. Miraculously, he survived the wounds, but his face was disfigured for the rest of his life, which turned out to be very long. 
Even with all the advantages that the Finns had accrued in the Winter War, one thing remained which they ultimately couldn't overcome, the overwhelming manpower advantage of the Soviets. Following a large and devastating artillery bombardment, the Red Army was able to overrun the Finnish defenses. With their troops running out of ammunition and on the brink of exhaustion, Finland agreed to peace terms a month later. They were forced to cede 11% of their country to the Soviet Union. However, the country maintained its independence and squared off for a second time against Russia in World War II. The Winter War was a short but deadly conflict. 26,000 Finns perished, along with 127,000 Soviets. Among other things, the Soviet Union's less than stellar performance is often cited as a key factor in Hitler's mistaken belief that his June 1941 invasion of the Soviet Union would be successful. As for Simo Heha, his post-war life proved to be long. As might be expected, it took several years and multiple surgeries for him to fully recover from his horrific wounds. However, he did make a full recovery, and for his meritorious service, the Finnish government gave him his own farm in southeast Finland on the Russian border. Heha was known as a modest man who never boasted of his wartime heroics. He rarely even spoke about the war, and when he was asked in 1998 how he became such a proficient sniper, he gave a one-word answer, quote, practice. He was asked shortly before his 96th birthday if he felt remorse for having killed so many people. He gave the following thoughtful response, quote, I did what I was told to do as well as I could. There would be no Finland unless everyone else had done the same thing, end quote. Simo Heha died at age 96 in a nursing home. One final note. In my studies of war heroes, it has become apparent to me that almost universally those individuals are soft-spoken, modest, and not prone to brag or speak highly of themselves. If you enjoyed this video, give a thumbs up, make a comment, and most importantly, subscribe to the channel. As always, thanks for watching.